we're down in Donaghadee Harbour. Um, out there is the Copeland Islands. So I was invited down today by the team at Copeland Gin. It's like you've got Bangor coming down here and we're down in Donaghadee and the islands are out there. I've never been out to them before. So, so Tim, who's the uh, marketing manager for Copeland Gin, he gave me a shout and he was like, we're gonna go out here um, and do a bit of like a recce. Do you wanna come with us, take some photographs? Yes. Do I wanna go on a boat to an island? Definitely. We've uh, ordered an Uber. <laughs> gone, we're going off off road here now. I don't th well, I, I don't think there is roads. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that own houses out here, but they only come and stay on like the weekend at the minute. Apparently the potato blight when it uh, hit Ireland, Copeland was one of the places that like could still grow because obviously there's sea all around it. So it, like apparently this whole place was full of potatoes and it basically fed Donaghadee and the surrounding coastline. I drove. <laughs> this is what happened. We're on foot. Tim's looking for a place to take some photos. Now there's a dude over here somewhere. Tommy, the guy who was on the boat with us with the dog. And he's training the dog. The dog's called Diesel. Great name. Anyway, he's training the dog to hunt without chasing a rabbit. Obviously he wants to be able to go out, shoot birds, pheasants, or wood pigeons, or whatever the heck he does wherever he lives. And he wants to make sure that the dog's attention's on the birds and not chasing a rabbit, you know? So they bring them out here to train them, to teach them to do that. So he's walking about there with a shotgun. consider like how many people live on this island it's probably like 20 throughout the year that come and go the amount of like plastic waste that's being washed up onto the shores here is insane there's no one here and the stuff is all washing up it's really quite scary minuscule to where yes yeah yeah this is quite an untouched piece of earth yet all this plastic and waste is just lying on the beaches and this is true uh, in uh, Blue Planet 2 they talked about the shipping container and all these uh, bath plastic ducks yeah. spilled out nah, uh, I, I swear you. right don't and they find them all over the world like from uh, Canada to Australia and I bet you that's one of them <laughs> it's Luke. There you, you go. So when you buy a plastic duck, it ends up on the Copeland Islands. Guys, let's well, reduce. Actually, let's reduce our duck purchasing. And they say, was it everywhere you go, try and pick up three pieces of plastic. Well, how much have you picked up? I've got a duck in my bag. I'm This is 
is like one of the main beach areas. We, so if you're coming up here and visiting the islands, you can like have a barbecue out here apparently. They do local tours. And you can come down with small boats and you can get the rib up like we did with Steve. Tim is photographing the, uh, the coping bottles there on the beach. I mean, you could just shoot them on any beach to be honest, but there's something, there's something authentic about doing it on the island that the gin's named after. It's just, he's just faffing on his phone. I cycle along this coastline a heck of a lot and I drive the car down here a lot bring the kids down to the beach and uh, it's amazing because I'm normally looking out this way so being out here and getting to see that from this side unreal like this whole place used to be farmland like loads of farmland it used to be spuds and potatoes growing the whole way down here you can see all the little trenches you know where they've been planting all the potatoes and growing them years ago The island has its own graveyard, like there's not a lot of plots, but it's here. And there's, there's gravestones here with dates going back to like 1809. But there's also like loads of like unnamed ones, so they're probably like from the 1700s. We're heading back now. Good he sitting back. So there you go, that's Copeland Island. How cool is that? Like, I did not expect to um, to go and do something like that. Thank you very much for bringing me along. No problem. It's good fun. I didn't expect like all the potato stuff, like no, like how that affected anything, and even the fact that there's so little people on the island. I thought that was quite an incredible feat. Like the amount of work that like that dude Stephen does. Yeah, for that boat land and the engineer behind that, it's insane. Like he's so he like he rents the island, but effectively he's like a caretaker for it. Like he's yeah, looking after the whole place. Yeah, a Stuart. A Stuart. There you go. Yeah. So you can apparently get out there on small, like very small boat trips, but I'm not 100% sure how to yeah, do it. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, there's, uh, I think it's kind of like quite private, you know, type scenario. I don't really, I, I got lucky because I know the guy who yeah. looks after the islands, but I don't know how you would go about it just as a general person. Yeah, not at all. Anyway, that was good fun. Thanks very much. Let's go get some food. Yes. Do you want the, uh, we'll just whip one.